Hi guys, this is Moni from BTE Magic. Welcome back to my channel. As you guys know, in about two weeks time, Pearson will release a new format of BTE academic test, which will be a two hour test. And this is also why over the last weekend, they have released five brand new mock tests on their official website. So before we used to have mock test A, B, C, D, but now they also have added a new mock test E. Not only that, but the content for mock test A, B, C, D have changed completely so you will not get the same questions as you did before. I actually find this quite useful because we get to see if they have changed the exam pattern significantly and if we can still use the same tips and tricks. In the video today, I will show you guys an experiment that I did with the speaking section. So what I did was that I only completed the speaking and skipped other modules so I didn't do writing I didn't do reading and listening I wanted to test the speaking section using my old tips and tricks and also check how many points approximately I will get for listening and reading just by doing speaking so make sure to watch until the end of this video before I show you the actual recording of me doing the test if you're not my subscriber then smash the subscribe button below I'm actually using the same headset as the one that they use in the PTE exam room. If you're interested, you, you can also check out my other video. Okay, let's start with mock test A. Okay, just gonna make the screen a bit bigger. There is every reason to believe that effective regulations are not merely a luxury that only the rich can afford, but an important foundation for thriving private sector and economic growth. But the broad pattern of the past five years has been that the main reform efforts are taking place in rich countries. There is every reason to, sorry, I'm just drinking water because of my throat. <laughs> There is every reason to believe that effective regulations are not merely a luxury that only the rich can afford, but an important foundation for a thriving private sector and economic growth. But the broad pattern of the past five years has been that the main reform efforts are taking place in rich countries. The survey found that the statistical chances of someone from a poor background being accepted at one of the country's most respected universities are far lower than those of a student from a wealthy family. This means that the inequalities in society are likely to be passed down from one generation to the next. The survey found that the statistical chances of someone from a poor background being accepted at one of the country's most respected universities are far lower than those of a student from a wealthy family. This means that the inequalities in society are likely to be passed down from one generation to the next. The survey found that the statistical chances of someone from a poor background being accepted at one of the country's most respected universities are far lower than those of a student from a wealthy family. This means that the inequalities in society are likely to be passed down from one generation to the next. Every morning, no matter how late he had been up, my father rose at 5.30, went to his study, wrote for a couple of hours, made us all breakfast, read, read the paper, Read, yeah, because this is the verb in the in past participle, past tense. Uh, si yeah, past simple, sorry. The paper with my mother and then went back to work for the rest of the morning. Many years passed before I realized that he did this for a living. Yeah, so again, this one is not read, yeah, it's read. Every morning, no matter how late he had been up, my father rose at 5.30 went to his study, wrote for a couple of hours, made us all breakfast, read the paper with my mother, and then went back to work for the rest of the morning. Many years passed before I realized that he did this for a living. Although it comes from a remote... <clears throat> this question actually comes out a lot, yeah. So this is in the question bank. We have this on our platform too. Although it comes from a remote region in the Himalayas, this plant now looks entirely at home on the banks of English rivers. Brought to the UK in 1839, it quickly escaped, colonizing riverbanks and dam woodlands. Now it is spreading across Europe, New Zealand and Canada. 
In the Himalayas, the plant is held in check by various pests, and it grows and reproduces unhindered. Okay. Although it comes from a remote region in the Himalayas, this plant now looks entirely at home on the banks of English rivers. Brought to the UK in 1839, it quickly escaped, colonizing river banks and dam woodlands. Now it is spreading across Europe, New Zealand, and Canada. In the Himalayas, the plant is held in check by various pests, and it grows and reproduces unhindered. Okay, it wasn't perfect, but okay. We just maintain the fluency, okay? Um, while yellow is considered an optimistic color, people lose their tempers more often in yellow rooms and babies will cry more. It is the most difficult color for the eye to take in, so it can be overpowering if overused. So normally I just like, even when I practice, I just use my body language, my hand gestures to keep the fluency. While yellow is considered an optimistic color, people lose their tempers more often in yellow rooms and babies will cry more. It is the most difficult color for the eye to take in, so it can be overpowering if overused. Uh. <laughs> Orientalists, like many other early 19th century thinkers, conceive of humanity either in large collective terms or in abstract generalities. Orientalists are neither interested in nor capable of discussing individuals. Instead, artificial entities predominate. They hurt beneath every white label, every possible variety of human plurality, reducing it in the process to collective abstractions. Okay, so many three to four syllable words. So you have to be very careful. So orientalist predominate abstractions. Orientalist, like many other early 19th century thinkers, conceive of humanity either in large collective terms or in abstract generalities. Orientalists are neither interested in nor capable of discussing individuals. Instead, artificial entities predominate. They hurt beneath very wide labels, every possible variety of human plurality, reducing it in the process to collective abstractions. Okay, fluency. I yeah, remember the timing. So we're still using the same method. So make sure that you can speak uh, around three words per second. Children as young as 14 months old will spontaneously help others for no reward. But a study of three to five years old found that although they will spontaneously draw pictures, if they were given a reward for drawing pictures, then later they will not make any drawings unless a reward was offered. Children as young as 14 months. Sorry about the noise from outside. <laughs> Children as young as 14 months old will spontaneously help others for no reward. But a study of three to five years old found that although they will spontaneously draw pictures, if they were given a reward for drawing pictures, then later they will not make any drawings unless a reward was offered. Okay, repeat sentence. Students are not allowed to take journals out of the library. Students are not allowed to take journals out of the library. There are many people in the USA who are critical of their voting system. There are many people in the USA who are critical of their voting system. Results will be available in the main quad and online. Results will be available in the main quad and online. His academic supervisor called in to see him last night. His academic supervisor called in to see him last night. The head of department isn't available till Thursday. The head of the department is not available till Thursday. The problems facing us today are global and therefore need global solutions. The problems facing us today are global and therefore need global solutions. 
In the 1880s, cycling became a major phenomenon in Europe. In the 1880s, cycling became a global major phenomenon in Europe. Oh, not global. Please take these up to Mr. Mitchell in the chemistry lab. Please take this matrix to the chemistry lab. I missed something. Modern business has to adapt and be flexible in order to survive. Modern businesses need to adapt and be flexible in order to survive. The mock trial aims to increase interest in the law and the judicial process. The mock trials aim to increase the interest in law and judicial process. The qualities needed by a successful business manager are similar to those needed in sport. The quality needed in the successful business managers are similar to those needed in sport. Evidence for clear correlations of brain events and behavioural events are always fascinating. Evidence for clear correlation between the brain events and behavioural events are always fascinating. That was hard. Okay. Okay. Describe image. The line graph below shows the gender pay gap in Scotland and UK from 1997 to 2005. As can be seen from the graph, there was a downward trend because it started at around 15% for the UK pay gap percentage in 1997, as well as around 18% for Scotland pay gap. However, this number declined gradually, and by the year 2005, the percentage of pay gap in Scotland reached the lowest point of around 9%, while for the UK, this number was around at 14%. So in conclusion, the gender pay gap decreased gradually until 2005. Okay, here we're going to highlight, highlight. so you can, you can see two bar charts here, right, for two different periods, 2001, 2002, and 2007 is in the navy color. So we're going to talk about two different bar charts and compare them, okay? All right. The bar chart below shows the percentage of households who selected consumer durables in the UK for two different periods of 2001-2002 as well as 2007. As can be seen from the first period of 2001-2002, the highest percentage was seen in telephone was around 90% of the households with, uh, in the UK. However, the lowest point was seen in mobile phones with only 25%. For the period of 2007, the numbers of mobile phones increased dramatically, even though it's still the lowest point. However, this number reached 80%. Meanwhile, the highest point is still in telephone with around 90% for the household. Oh, it's already finished? Okay. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, it's okay if computer cuts you, but don't do it too often, okay? Precipitation, average temperature, okay. So we have line graph and we have bar chart here. And then it's a bit confusing, but you need to see here precipitation in the, it's in the bar chart and it's on the left-hand side, while the line graph is for the right-hand side. The graph below shows the precipitation and average temperatures from January to December. As can be seen from the graph, the bar chart represents the precipitation and the highest point was seen in October with 400 millimeters. Meanwhile, the minimum number was seen in December 
with around 20 millimeters in precipitation. On the other hand, for the average temperature, the highest temperature was seen in July, and it was around 30 degrees Celsius, while the coldest month was seen in December with only 2 degrees Celsius. So in conclusion, the coldest month was December. Okay, it was a quick conclusion, but it's okay. Don't worry too much about, you know, making sense and, you know, being too sophisticated with your content. Okay, amount of food waste if I hear in UK in megatons, it's thrown away. Mm -hmm. The bar chart below shows the amount of food wasted per year in UK in megatons across four different categories, food and drinks manufacturers, distribution and retail companies, private household and hospi hospitality sector and institutions. The purple bar chart shows the saved and recycled food, which can be seen um, the highest in food and drinks manufacturers with around two megatons per year. Meanwhile, distribution and retail companies contribute to the lowest one with below one megatons per year. On the other hand, for thrown away, the number was significant and the highest in private household with around eight megatons per year. Okay. Read our lecture. To begin with, how underfunded is UK higher education? Uh, the table shows the proportion of gross domestic products spent on institutions uh, by the main OECD countries for the latest year, for which we have statistics, 2001. It shows that UK spending, public and private, on higher education institutions was at 1.08%, well below the OECD mean of 1.34% of GDP. The table clearly shows that the UK is in the bottom five countries of the 20 in the table in terms of public expenditure on tertiary education, its spending being proportionately equal to that of Italy and Mexico. At the other end of the table, we see that Denmark and Finland allocate most public money to tertiary education, spending twice as high a proportion of GDP on it as does the UK. The lecture talks about the UK and higher education, which is very underfunded. The proportion of gross domestic product spent on the institution by OECD countries was shown in the statistics for 2001. He also talks about the UK spending in public and private on higher education, which was at 1.08%, which is below the OECD percentage of 1.34% of the GDP. So the UK bottom was the bottom of the five countries of 20 on the public expenditure. They spend the same as Italy and Mexico, while the Denmark and Finland were the ones that spend most on tertiary education. Okay, I couldn't fit, in, fit everything in, but it's okay. What is used to turn off an electric light? The light switch, light switch. What instrument allows you to see distant objects in space? Telescope, telescope. What word is used to describe getting a higher position within the same company? Promotion. What is the name of the land area containing a college or university? Campus. Campus. How many years are there in a century? One hundred. One hundred. Okay, so we're going to skip everything else and to check our speaking score, okay? <laughs> mm. 
Okay, so I just waited 15 minutes and now let's check the result. Okay. Yep, so we got 90 here for speaking. Um, and because I didn't do any other sections, so obviously for writing, the minimum was 10 because we didn't do anything in writing. Uh, but we got 35 points in listening and 33 points in reading just by doing speaking. So um, maybe I did something wrong in speaking that didn't give me enough point in listening, or maybe they decreased the points for listening because before we used to get about 40, I think about 40 for listening if you complete the speaking perfectly. So uh, we will have to test other MOOC tests to see uh, what is the real reason why uh, I'm not getting above 40 in listening? But um, yeah, great news is that we got speaking 90. The only thing is we cannot see enabling scores. So we don't know what I got for pronunciation, for fluency. Um, and so, you know, in, in, I think, I believe in the real test, you will have a separate a feedback form where you can see additional feedback relating to your scores. But yeah, yeah. Um, you know, cutting down the enabling scores actually makes me feel a bit concerned uh, about, you know, like how, how you can improve in the future. But yeah, the tips and strategies still work. So obviously the old strategies still work, but there will be more weight, so more marking weight placed on repeat sentence. As you guys can see that the numbers of repeat sentence questions are still the same, around 12 sentences, I think. But for describe image, there are less questions and even for read aloud, right? So uh, you guys will need to focus more on repeat sentence in order to get a higher score for speaking and for listening. I will still need to check other modules like writing, reading and listening. So make sure to subscribe to my channel so that you can see more videos. I hope this was helpful and if you guys have any questions, feel free to comment below. Thank you guys for watching and until next time. Bye!